All right, so we're going to start seeing the slashes, but before we do that, we have to define the different heights that we have. First one, remember guys, we're going to kind of like define the first by the attack on the neck. Second one is going to be attack on the top of the chest, a uh, little bit on the bottom of the chest or the top of the stomach, that's going to be the third. And on the bottom of the stomach is going to be the fourth one. That's pretty much the, the ones that we're going to cover today. Keep in mind that yes, realistically, you can you know, attack the leg Although in a case in which it's knife against knife, it might be a little bit too risky for the other person. But yeah, you can also see that. But again, the idea is to define those four and how to react against those attacks. So the first one that we're gonna see is the number one, the attack against uh, the neck. A quick thing, a, a quick trip, uh, uh, that you can, a trick that you can use to detect this. If you can actually see the form of the person, the back of the form, immediately you're gonna be blocking it. And this is going to be kind of like a 45 degrees angle and put as much weight as possible so the person cannot go through. But this is only going to be a temporary solution. So again, I'm just gonna teach you the blocking, but keep in mind that that's gonna only work in a very uh, short period of time. And also you have to take into account that the other person might continue if it's stronger. So that's why this hand is also important. But again, we're gonna ignore that for a second just to show you how to do everything with this hand. So again, you're gonna be blocking. The second height, as I said before, on the top of the chest, we're talking about slashing steel. So the, the slash on the second one is gonna be there. And that's where you can see the front of the form. That's where you're gonna do your classic power in uh, uh, any Filipino martial arts, which is down into the side, and you're gonna do it with the back of uh, your form as well. So it's gonna be here, down into the side. Now, why did I say down into the side, not towards the side? Because if a person is continuing going forward and I just go towards the side, I'm gonna get stopped, slash in this case. So it's down into the side. As you can see, you press a little bit um, towards the person. So that pressure needs to be there. Also, it allows you to kind of cover yourself just in case and create a physical barrier between you and the knife. Basically, that's, that's the main um, purpose of this. On the third one, it's kind of like the same way. You're still gonna be doing the same uh, skill and still comfortable, but it's when it starts to be a little bit annoying, particularly if the other person is way smaller than you are, in which you might have to actually lower your body, and that's when you have to kind of like figure out if this is better for you or what I'm about to explain to you on the fourth height is actually better for this type. And in this case is when someone slash you, uh, slashes you too low, you won't be able to do this efficiently. Why? A slash quick. First of all, there's a chance that you're not even gonna rise. Second of all, even if you manage to do that, you chances are you're still gonna be cut. So this is kind of like not really a, a, a very efficient manner. So what you're gonna do instead, you're gonna use the empty hand, create a physical barrier just in case, and you're gonna palm down into the side again, down into the side, and as you can see, I'm pressing as much as I can down into the side, so I can, it kind of looks more like a block with your hand, but it's putting, um, a little bit the uh, the quote unquote uh, block with the base of my uh, palm, but the idea is pushing down into the side, not only downwards but down into the side. But also remember, this is going to create a physical barrier, so it's going to be difficult to be stabbed at least on this side. Um, so instead, you're going to be padding uh, towards the opposite side. So again. Just as a recap, so you guys can start working. And again, keep in mind that we're kind of like not using these on purpose, so you are familiar to what to do with this hand. So we're going to use this and redirect. This one to redirect on the second and on the third, and on the fourth, we're using that, but we're not cutting anymore. We're not doing, we're not using this hand to cut. We're just using this hand to Parry and redirect on the second and the third height, but I'm not cutting, which is something that we're gonna incorporate in a second. So keep in mind that, yes, it might not be realistic uh, for me to just do this, because obviously the person is going to try to slash, or the person might continue to go forward, right? Uh, but that's what this hand is for. But we're gonna see that in a second. Practice this first, and if you have any questions, just let me know, okay? Whoosh, thank you. All right, so the second one. Um, as I was talking about before, uh, the first height that we have, and that's when we're gonna start dividing everything and incorporating this hand as a way for us to also counter that movement and trying to create some damage as well. So the slash is coming towards your uh, neck, and in this case, as I said before too, if you see the back of the form, 
that's when you can incorporate this in as a way for you to block. Now, technically, you can use your, uh, your knife to push away like this if you just happen to have your knife on the other side, but ideally what you're looking for is this. And I wanna say why in a second, but before I wanna show you the angle. So it's basically same like as if you're doing a, an X block, but a little bit farther, and then you're gonna focus on the form and on checking with the knife. So again, here. By the way, for those of you who don't know that what is an X block, is because you're forming the letter X basically, but now you're using your form and uh, the knife, right? So super slow here. Now, why? Because if I just cut this way, that hand is still a threat. But if I cut with this, I'm gonna go directly towards that other hand. And that's actually going to be our first goal. It's gonna be a, like a long arch, and you're gonna go towards that hand. Regardless of what the other person is doing, if the other person is not launching a, a punch, I'm still gonna go towards that hand to move that hand away. If the person is launching a punch, I can move far away and still target the hand as I'm progressing, right? Now be careful of this. Again, we're gonna finish this later. And I know that when I do this, it kind of like looks like, oh my God, this is open. Yes, it's open, but guess what? You can also stop after or slash after that. But again, so far, we're gonna just incorporate one move and it's gonna be this. Okay. Well, now we have the second, um, the second height that we were talking about before. In this case, the slash is going to go towards the top of the chest, or even a little bit lower. That is a case in which you can efficiently use it down into the side. And again, the component needs to be there of the down into the side. And it's not only towards the side for what I was saying before, just in case you don't want to get slash. So again, instead, it's down into the side. You have to put as much uh, pressure as possible on the other person's arm. Now. One thing that I want to clarify now, particularly because we're going to engage this other hand and this hand to slash, is that not only you're going to be doing that, but as much as you can, once you press, you're going to move right after. So after you cross the center line, you're going to move farther away just in case. Why? Same reason as I was targeting that hand before. I still in, I have to be mindful that that hand exists. So what if the person just does this? Then it's going to be difficult. So again, first one is, this, but then moving immediately right away. But it's kind of tricky, right? Because slow, I'm going to stop here. And if I don't continue the movement, but I rather stay here and I start moving backwards, the person can progress and continue forward. Still getting slashed on the side is no joke. So you have to be careful of that. So you still have to cross towards the, the center line, at least towards the other side. So now it's a little bit freer for you to move backwards. That is an option, and that is just the option of I, you want to escape, and the beauty of this is that it, allow, it allows you to switch your uh, knife right away and slash the other person's arm like this. That's okay. But let's actually go with a little bit more um, of a, an aggressive way of dealing with that. In this case, we're gonna do the same thing, but look from here, I'm gonna check and I'm gonna cut right away. So one more time, one, and two. Now, when I do the second cut, and let's actually go to this direction, so just in case you guys can actually see that one, is one here, and I'm gonna cut towards the other person's hand at the same time. So you can see I'm finishing here, but I'm gonna cut right away. An important thing is you're gonna be checking uh, that other elbow, just in case the person comes back. So go again here, and that way you can check before you notice that the person is moving. You can create some pressure just in case at least you know where the hand is going and then you can control even cut back if you need it. So that is the second option. The notes that I would say or that I would give here is that when you do these, again, you want to press down into the side, cross towards the other side and check pushing towards the other person this way. You don't want to push towards the side because look at what happens. It's very subtle, but look at what happens in the difference. When you go towards the side and the person should remain there, not only this is open, this is also open all together. When I go towards the persons, it's kind of like trapping and controlling more uh, the body from turning. So it's actually going to be useful, particularly when you use the attack to go towards the other person's hand, because it's going to be much, much more useful when you escape later towards the other side, just in case, okay? All right, so uh, the next one that we're gonna see, make sure that when you do the following one, and yes, we're gonna do the same thing, now you have to go slightly lower like this, why? This is gonna be lower than before, and again, if you are slightly taller than the other person, these might start being a little bit uncomfortable for you, and if the person progresses, this might not be enough for you to redirect. So again, make sure that you go slightly lower when you do that. 
if you need it. Again, if you are uh, smaller than the other person, then it's the opposite. You might actually have to even uh, tiptoe in, but you have to stand tall, right? So from there, down and to the side, make sure that you check the same way, but look at the difference. Now we're gonna go straight and stop um, the armpit by pushing towards the back. Ideally, and this is what we're gonna do, is after you do, the, do this and, and check, make sure that you stop towards the back in uh, 45 degrees towards the side, why? The difference is, if the person is progressing here with a punch or a slash, boom, might hit me back, even if I'm already in the process of stopping. Unlikely, but that can happen. But if I go straight, that's gonna be very hard, because now, not only I'm pushing backwards, but if the person tries to come at me in the same direction that I'm pushing, the person will be digging uh, the uh, knife deeper, causing more damage and definitely uh, you know, not allowing the person to turn completely towards the side. So make sure that when you do this, slow, one to side, you go straight right away, and then you go again with a little bit of an angle rather than going straight. It doesn't matter, I mean, honestly, if you go straight, it's still gonna cause a lot of damage, but as I said, this is actually a little bit more useful. So again, one, two, and three, and this is just for the follow-up, just in case the person is thinking about turning, this is going to be easier for you to, as you see, stop and move far away and gain more range, which is kind of like your main goal out of this. So it's trying to escape as safely as possible, as soon as possible. So again, if you have any questions, although this I feel like it's pretty much the same thing as what we were seeing before, just down into the side, just check and go straight, okay? Good, thank you. All right, so fourth and last one. Again, we're just seeing the beginnings of uh, how to apply with uh, uh, the knife against knife with the slashing. Make sure that when you are applying the following one that you focus more, at least in the beginning, on putting your elbow next to your body because you wanna create that physical barrier. Why? If I go like this, that's still gonna be bad. Even if I manage to do this, it's still, I might get cut. Put the physical barrier, it's just a little bit more challenging for the other person because the person would have to encounter my arm first. That doesn't mean that it's good. Still, being cut on your arm sucks, but you know, much better than being cut on your belly. So again, physical barrier, and that's gonna be down into the side. Very simple. Now, look at what I did. It's just a clean cut um, through the bicep. Now, super slow because I wanna emphasize one thing. When you cut, you don't wanna cut sideways. You wanna cut towards the back of the person, because there's a huge difference between you, and particularly if you're wearing clothes like this, in which that cut might be a superficial one. So what you want when you're targeting the bicep is precisely the bicep and the muscle, so you don't wanna kill anybody. What you want is to avoid being killed. So in this case, what you're trying to do is actually try to target the muscle. So again, if you just do this, it might be just a superficial cut and the other person might continue. But if you go here towards the other uh, side, that's gonna be a little more difficult. Now, most times when I explain that is that, well, wouldn't you encourage the other person from punching you with the other hand? The answer is yes. That's actually very bad and something that you have to take into account. Now, possible solution for that is go straight right away and stab that other arm. That's one solution. Keep in mind that also, if you do this, unless you're fainting, trying to do this crossing and punching will take a little bit of time because you're perceiving that the knife is in front of you. So you, if you have intention of cutting a person, chances are that you're not gonna do this and this. However, if you're faking that because you're seeing that the other person is nervous and you just do this as a way for you to trigger that response, yes, that can actually be a, 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 a problem with that. So in this case, you're still gonna create a, uh, um, the physical barrier. But look at what happens if I see that this is a fake. Let's say that let's say that you attack this way, but you're attacking. So rather than wasting my time at doing this, if I see that this is a fake, I'm gonna target the hand right away anyway, and I'm gonna go. The only thing is that obviously for that, I would have to move my head out of way. That's it, and just in case, that's going to be a little bit easier to move towards that side. But as of right now, even because I, I just wanted to give you that hint because that's the type of things that most people ask me when I do this. Yes, I acknowledge that that is a possibility, but for now on, what I'm going to do is this. That's it, okay? There's also one alternative for that hand, which is what I was just doing and what I'm going to explain now, which is I'm gonna do this and move. Yes, I clear, but I wanna gain some range, right? Keep in mind that the knife is gonna give you some range anyway. Look at the difference between me, between my punch 
and now look, I can be here, I can still slash. So obviously that's still gonna give me some leverage. So if I'm going here, I'm going to be moving far away immediately by leaning backwards, kind of like distancing myself from that bunch. So please let me know if there's any questions. Just, I hope that this is clear. Again, down into the side and cut towards the back of the person. Okay, ready, push.